Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, so yesterday I, I mentioned by way of introduction that uh, I'll uh, be talking about uh, in the course of uh, these uh, talks which I'll be giving on my YouTube channel, I'll be talking about uh, the, uh, the uh, modern journalism based on uh, principles of classical Islamic uh, scholarship. And uh, I sort of uh, introduced that subject uh, as well as myself uh, yesterday. Uh, the second uh, sort of big subject that I'll be talking about uh, with regard to my uh, career in the media will be storytelling in a contemporary context. Now, when I say uh, storytelling, when I at least say when uh, storytelling in a contemporary context, then uh, I mean uh, radio soap opera. So when you say when people... Uh, radio soap opera, you know, people might uh, know it as uh, as uh, radio drama, a radio drama series, but it's known as uh, radio soap opera. So when people say in uh, a, a soap opera, the word soap opera, you can have soap operas on TV, but uh, the type of soap opera that I particularly have worked in, I've, uh, as you can see from the uh, amateurish nature of my videos i haven't uh, worked in uh, in uh, tv at all i haven't worked in uh, in uh, video journalism i've only worked in audio journalism and i believe very much that uh, the radio is the is the uh, modern equivalent of a storyteller and the big reason for that is that uh, you know with the radio you have to imagine things and when a storyteller is telling you a story then uh, you, when a storyteller is telling you a story, you have to conjure up pictures in your own mind. And, when, uh, and it's the same with the radio. If the radio is telling you something, you have to conjure up the pictures in your own mind. And that's why I believe very much that the radio is the modern equivalent of uh, a storyteller. So uh, the uh, but soap opera. So when I talk about soap opera, I'm talking about radio soap opera. But when you say soap opera, the thing which uh, immediately comes to mind is the element of suspense, that there's uh, a cliffhanger at the end of uh, every episode. Now, this cliffhanger, it enables one to... Uh, it keeps one hooked on the story, for a start, and secondly, it, uh, it helps you to... Uh, it, it, it encourages people to talk about the story. You know, people, you know, been watching a, a, a video, watching a, a soap opera or listening to a soap opera on the radio. Then they, uh, they, oh, did you hear what happened last night? Oh, what do you think is going to happen next? So it encourages people uh, to talk about the story. Uh, and uh, this, of course, is even uh, more uh, helpful in uh, making people, uh, you know, remember the story and uh, making it settle in and driving, you know, as we'll come to, you know, the moral of the story, driving that uh, home. The more people can talk about it, the better. Now, when I was appointed to, uh, to actually by the BBC, to uh, take the archers to Afghanistan, we'll come to the archers. In, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a British soap opera on uh, BBC Radio 4, and we'll have lots of uh, opportunities to uh, refer to it. The, uh, when I was uh, given the opportunity to bring the archers to Afghanistan in 1993, I didn't really know anything about uh, radio soap opera. So I was very lucky to, uh, be, uh, to have uh, some tuition from uh, a uh, former editor of the actual archers, which, as I say, is a radio soap opera was still running on BBC uh, Radio. I was lucky to have the tuition from a former editor of The Archers, and her name was uh, Liz Rigby. So one of the things that she asked me was, uh, was uh, is there a storytelling tradition in Afghanistan? And I said, yes, there is. There's a very strong storytelling tradition, uh, because I remembered from my time amongst the Pashtuns how, the, uh, how you know, grandchildren used to be riveted 
and uh, listening to uh, the uh, stories which were being told by their grandfather. And this happened, it used to happen, uh, particularly in the days before television and stuff like that, it used to happen uh, every night and they used to, the, you know, grandparents uh, used to give, uh, you know, uh, stories, tell stories to their grandchildren and that's what they would be riveted on every night. So I, I knew about that. And so, so where did these stories come from? I, uh, I, I, th th there are two main sources of these stories. Uh, one is the stories of the prophets, which we call Qasas uh, al-Anbiya. And uh, so the, the stories of the prophets, those are some of the stories which are told to children in Afghanistan. And the, uh, the other uh, source of these stories that are told to children in Afghanistan is the Thousand and One Nights. Uh, so the Thousand and One Nights sits erroneously in the, the West uh, known as the Arabian Nights. I say erroneously, firstly because that's not the name of the collection of stories. The collection of stories is Alfu Layla wa Laylatun, uh, A Thousand and One Nights. And that element of installments, one story or one installment or one episode of a story per night, that is extremely important because uh, the, uh, that was, uh, it was on that basis of the installments that the teller of the stories, Queen Sherzade, who is the teller of the stories, she uh, installed the element of suspense in these stories by virtue of telling one installment per night. And uh, then her, the person who was listening to the stories, her husband, uh, King, Sher, uh, King, Sher, um, King uh, Shahriar, uh, you know, he would want more, more, more. Well, why not more? And then she would make an excuse. Oh, no, there's morning now. I can't tell you any more. You know, we can only tell stories at night time. So that's uh, so. This is very much the. Uh, you know, as I'll be going into these two sources of uh, stories in Afghanistan, these two sources of storytelling in Afghanistan, Qisasul Anbiya, Qisasul Anbiya, and uh, Alfu Leila wa Leilatun. These, uh, this will be the basis of my storytelling in a contemporary context uh, talks that I'll also be giving on this channel. And I've gone over time. I meant to keep each talk to five minutes, but I've gone over time today as well. So, but uh, hopefully I'll get the hang of this thing more and more as I go on.